snow day! Woohoo! Sparta, come here! Hey everyone, so we are getting ready to go to Colorado to go snow skiing! Woo! Yay! So we are getting the um, ski racks on, put on top of the car, getting our skis out, and then we're going to be packing. So this will be... Um, that was loud. <laughs> this will be just our preparation vlog. Nate's getting the skis down right now. Perfect. Moment of truth. Are they still in there? I hope so. Yeah. Hey there. Woo! I'm so excited! You want your short, ski short skis? No, I want my powder skis. Yeah. Because there better be powder. Yeah. I think uh, I checked yesterday, or checked a minute ago, and earlier they had uh, 24 inches in the last week. So not as much as like uh, I think I think Wolf Creek actually had like th had like four feet in the last week. So it'll still be good. It's still a good base of powder. There go the bad boys. Yeah. Yes, we have four pairs of skis between the two of us. Don't judge. What you got there? Uh, so I've got all of my, uh, my sharpening tools, everything like that. We'll take with us. Uh, so the skis have got a pretty good coat of wax on them uh, from whenever I put them away over the uh, over the summertime, and that kind of keeps the edges from rusting uh, very bad. There's a little bit of surface rust on them, but you know they're metal, and that's just kind of what happens. So we'll get that all taken care of whenever we uh, when we get up there. But yeah, so just lots of uh, files and brushes and angle guides, a little clamp here and there. Extra powder baskets to go on the ends of the ski poles that fit mostly, kind of. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. You want to just ski here? I was gonna say, do you think I can ski that hill? Maybe. Get my bindings out. I'll try it. You could probably make the first uh, first descent of it. I'm pretty sure nobody has ever skied that hill before. Send it. Alrighty, the first order of business is to put the ski racks back on the car. And there we go. We'll put the skis on it uh, after we get all the stuff on the inside because our skis are long enough that uh, come back here. our skis are long enough that this won't open up if our skis are hanging off. So, little tricks of the trade you learn as you go. So at any rate, uh, yeah. So that's the uh, the ski racks are on. We'll put the skis on last, and uh, let's go inside, and we will do a bit of a uh, what did you say? Not a, not a tutorial. A checklist. Yeah, a virtual checklist of what to pack going skiing and how to not overpack. So as I'm starting to get packed here, somebody knows that we are leaving and she's not real happy about it. That's super sad. Okay, so we have got all of our laundry done, and we are going to be packing everything that, uh, that, yeah, that we need to take all the apparel and gear and everything like that. So, Stephanie is going to uh, going to go first, and she's going to show you everything that she brings. Uh, and the reason we're doing this, uh, it's not only to be 
just, you know, hey, what to bring during a snow ski trip, but it's also going to be uh, how not to overpack. You know, you don't want to bring too much because <laughs> every single time we go snow skiing with friends or family, there's always somebody in the group that just brings way too much stuff. And it's, uh, yeah, it's like everybody, and then everybody makes fun of them because it's like you get to the back of the, the SUV and then they just keep piling all of their junk in there. It's like, how long are you going for? Like, how long, how long is this ski trip going to be? Uh, <laughs> how long is this ski trip going to be? Are you going to be here for like months or like, what's the deal? And so, yeah, we're going to show you how to decrease the amount of stuff that you need to bring and still be super comfortable and still have clean clothes and everything like that. So and let's be go prepared for different weather types, different weather types. So let's go. What? I wasn't ready. Oh, well, you're going. Okay. Um, Okay, so first and foremost, different weather types. So we're only going for, we're only going to be gone for five days, but we're only skiing for three of those days. So I'm only bringing one pair of ski pants. I have multiple pairs, but I'm only bringing one because it's really all you need. For three days, they'll dry. Um, I'm going to be wearing undergarments underneath them, so um, one pair is plenty. Now, as far as my tights go, I'm bringing two pairs of tights, and I've got one pair that is relatively thin. Um, they're pretty, they're they're really they're tight, they're tights, um, but they're pretty thin. And then I've got one pair that is pretty thick. Now I looked at the weather for the time that we're supposed to be there, and it's actually supposed to be relatively warm, but it is supposed to storm for three of the days. So. Um, even if it is, you know, 30 or 40 degrees outside, which is relatively warm for skiing, um, if it's actively snowing and blowing, it's going to be a little bit colder. It's going to feel a little bit colder. So I brought my thicker tights just to prepare for one day of that. Uh, I also have, I will mention that my, um, my snow pants are um, insulated. So they are actually, they do have a layer of insulation, a layer of fleece underneath them. So... If it gets too warm, honestly, I won't wear tights underneath them at all. So I've got my tights alone for the warmest days. I'm sorry, my ski pants alone for my war for the warmest days. Ski pants and light tights, and then ski pants and thick tights. Okay, so as far as shirts go, um, I am bringing, like I said, we're skiing for three days and we'll be there for five days. So we've got two days of just kind of hanging around town, um, that kind of thing. So for skiing, again, same thing as my tights. I've got one, um, one long sleeve Under Armour shirt, uh, cold gear shirt. That's, it's, it's warm, but it, it's, it's warm and tight, but it's not too warm. I, it can, it can definitely be good for, um, those, kind of warmer days on the slopes. Um, that paired with my North Face, um, this is actually just the liner of my Triclimate jacket. And this is what I wear most of the time when I ski. I, most of the time I don't wear the full shell of my ski jacket because it's just too warm. So I wear this and just a, just a base layer shirt. And then I'll throw a fleece on. Um, I'll actually be bringing this same fleece. Um, so that all together, honestly, on the warm days, it's going to be too hot. So I'll, um, go sans fleece. If it gets cold, um, I've got this Under Armour. This is another Under Armour. This is not a plug for Under Armour at all, but both of my shirts are Under Armour. Um, very thick, nice fleece, uh, underneath it, but good base layer there. Uh, it has a hood, it has a hood that's pretty tight around your face. Um, honestly, I don't ever use that hood, but it's good to have, I guess, if you need that. Um, as far as, let's see, still on shirts, um, for just walking around town and everything, I've just got two, like, just one long sleeve shirt and one kind of, like, long sleeve shirt hoodie kind of thing, and I'll just wear a tank top underneath both of them, just one plain tank top, 
that can go underneath both shirts. Pretty versatile. So that's all I have for sh for so tops and bottoms. As far as like, oh no, I did miss one. I've got jeans. Just one pair of jeans. That's all I really need. So I've got three days of three days of skiing, one day of or two days of being around town. I can wear the same pair of jeans twice. That's not a big deal. Um, and then just undergarments. I've got let's see, two pairs of ski socks, and I'll wear one. So I'll have three pairs of ski socks. Um, I'll bring a pair of underwear for every single day because I'm likely not going to do laundry or much laundry at all. My underwear don't take up too much space, so. I'll just bring all of them. And two bikinis because hot tub. Um, let's see. My beanie, super important. Ear warmers, super important. So I've got all of my head gear, head warming gear. And then my blanket scarf. This is my most favorite thing. I love this thing. Uh, got this in Canada last year. This thing is, this is a scarf, yes, it is a scarf. It's also, it can double as a blanket, hence the name of blanket scarf. Um, yeah, so you just fold it over and wear it as a scarf, and it's super, super cozy. I love this thing. Super, super comfortable, super cute, and super warm. Let's see, what else do I have? Um, in my boot bag, this is my boot bag. Got my helmet. It's important. Very important. You guys who don't wear helmets while you're skiing, you're crazy. Wear a helmet. Helmet and my goggles and mittens. I learned, so I learned this the hard way a few years ago that mittens are way better than just gloves when you're skiing. I mean, regardless, like, if you're wearing leather gloves or, you know, ski gloves that actually have the fi individual fingers, you still, you're, you still can't use your fingers. Like, it doesn't help any. So, having all of your fingers smashed together and being able to, um, do this while you're sitting on the, on the, um, chairlift makes a huge difference. So, mittens. And my face mask. This is why I don't really wear the hood thing um, on my sweater when I'm skiing because I have a uh, balaclava or na as Nathan likes to call it a baklava. A baklava. Definitely a baklava. Not, um, not the same? Not the same thing, no. Ugh. So yeah, that usually keeps me way too warm, especially like I said, looking at the forecast and it's going to be 40 degrees, likely won't wear this very much because it gets really hot. But if it's snowing, um, if it's actively snowing and windy, that does really help to keep face and nose and everything. Uh, Blowing windy. snow hitting you in the face kind of sucks. Uh, so that's that's really what that's awesome for. Yeah. Okay. I'll put that away. Unless you have a beard, which neither of us are very capable of growing beards. No. <laughs> and then my boots, of course. That's a that's pretty good, pretty big, um, important piece. What else do we have? Oh, my, my Sorel boots. My most favorite thing, my two favorite things about winter are my Sorel boots and my blanket scarf. That's as far as apparel goes. But uh, these are great for snow and ice, and they've, got, they've actually got really good traction. Um, waterproof all around here, whatever that is, Gore-Tex or whatever. I'm not sure if that's actually what it is. Um, and they're super warm. So usually if I'm wearing these and my ski socks, my feet are, my feet actually get hot most of the time. And gloves. So these are, um, these are like the E-tip gloves. I don't know what kind they are, Dekine or something like that. Um, I really like these because I can't, they're, they're not something that you want to be like using your phone and like texting or something. They're not that good, but just for pulling out your pulling out your phone and taking a picture while you're skiing, they it works really good without having to pull your pull your hand out of your glove and all of that. So, uh, but they're not waterproof, so these need to go underneath your. These are basically liners, 
So they go underneath your mittens or your other gloves. So those are those are good, and I like these for just walking around town rather than having um, my full mittens on. Okay, what else do I have? I think that's pretty much all as far as my apparel goes. Um, I'll be wearing, I'll probably just be wearing a pair of jeans and one of my shirts. Um, oh, I think I am going to bring a pair of sweatpants. I haven't really decided on this. Usually I don't bring sweatpants because if I'm just lounging around the condo, I'm just going to be in my tights. I'll just take off my ski pants and just lounge in my tights. But I don't have a whole lot of other clothes, so I'm debating on whether or not I'm going to take these. But maybe, maybe not. Otherwise, I'll just sleep in my tights. Okay, so we're going to go over what I like to bring and I like to pack and wear and everything like that. Um, so we kind of have a little different strategy, honestly, on how we like to pack. I like to pack thinking about like what I'm going to be wearing, um, what I'm going to be wearing the entire uh, while I'm skiing, basically from the top down. I kind of go through my checks because it's always terrible when you forget something. Uh, you forget something and you get to the ski hill and then either you can't go skiing or you have to go buy it or whatever. It just makes for a bad time. So hmm. starting from Colby. The <laughs> Colby. <laughs> okay, so starting from the top, got a helmet. Helmet, goggles. Helmet, goggles, check. Okay, pretty straightforward. Uh, underneath that, I know that I'm going to have beanies. Uh, so I've got two different beanies. Uh, this one's an Under Armour beanie. It's a little thicker. Uh, this is a Marmot beanie. Beanie, a little bit thick, thinner and thicker, just depending on how cold it is, or if I sweat through one. Uh, that's one of the struggles, like guys versus girls. It's like I don't know. It's like, at least in our relationship, it's like I sweat way more than Stephanie does, and so I have to account for that whenever I'm skiing, especially if I'm skiing hard. Uh, it doesn't matter how cold it is and how appropriately I'm dressed. It's just I'm going to sweat. It's going to be ideal. So. If you're like me, this is kind of how we combat that issue. So, starting from the head down, helmet, beanies, goggles. Uh, below that, I'm going to have a neck gaiter. Uh, this is one of them. Basically, it just slips over your head like this. goes up around your neck. I, I rarely wear uh, this one in particular. I've got another thin one that I'm going to look for as I'm talking. But basically, it is for... Uh, it is for those colder days, kind of like what Stephanie has. She has her uh, baklava, <laughs> bal balaclava. <laughs> I've said it wrong so many times I can't remember which which one it is. At any rate, uh, I, I saw it earlier today, your gray yeah. icebreaker one. Yeah. Oh, it was right there. You just had it in your hand. Oh, that's a shirt. Oh, hey, there it is. Yep. There was the other one. I know it was right there. Okay, so I got two of these. Honestly, this one, I have it, but it's so small, it doesn't take up any space, really, so I bring it anyway. Um, but this one, this is an icebreaker, uh, icebreaker, just, what I don't know, really know what you'd call this, neck gator. Neck gator. That, uh, I, I love this thing, because it's wool, and it's not itchy wool, it's super soft, it breathes well, and it dries quickly, and it doesn't stink. If you know anything about wool, you know that's, uh... A good property of it. So going down from that, uh, start thinking about base layers. I haven't got all my stuff pulled out like Stephanie had. He is way less organized than I am. <laughs> okay. Coming down from that, uh, talking about layers on your torso. Uh, I always just have just a regular t-shirt uh, for the most part that I wear on my torso. I actually am up to three icebreaker shirts right now. They're all wool shirts. Uh, and even though they're on the spindier side, uh, I love them and I wear them. That's all I wore whenever I was in Nicaragua for the most part. And they're wool. They dry very quickly. They don't stink. Is the and check out thing. that design. And it's yeah. got sick designs on it. So super shout out to Icebreaker. Uh, they make awesome stuff and I'm working at building up my arsenal of their, their stuff because it's, it's so good. Um, yeah, so after that, we start talking about base layers, things uh, things to keep us warm. Like Stephanie was saying, it's supposed to be on the warmer side of things. So um, I always, I, I do like to prepare for, if it's, if it is cold, if 
cold snap comes through or something comes through, yeah, and, and you just want to be prepared, but without being over prepared. Uh, I got two long sleeve base layers. Uh, this is the one I typically wear most of the time. It's just an Adidas long sleeve, really thin wicking material. Uh, if it's really cold outside, I wear this Under Armour one. It's the Arm Under Armour like 3.0 uh, long sleeve with a hood. And it has to be below zero for me to wear this one. It is ridiculously warm, but very nice if it's very cold out. Uh, on top of that, I will wear uh, my marker, just fleece half zip. So that would layer on top of that. Uh, on top of that would be my black uh, Mammut soft shell. Um, if, and this is, this is, like I said, it's preparing for if it's super cold outside. Um, but it's probably not going to be like that. Uh, on top of that is my ski jacket. Which is here. It is, uh, it's pretty much uninsulated for the most part, whereas Stephanie's is insulated. Uh, it's got that, hers has got that puffy inside of it, so mine's pretty much uninsulated. It's just a shell, which is why I have to have one extra layer of insulation. So, that is pretty much the top layer of torso. Um, if it's, I've got one other, what is it, what would be that, that down vest that I can also layer on there, mm -hmm. but it just kind of depends on the conditions and it's just one of those experience things. Uh, I have a tendency to underdress, uh, underdress, get on the hill, immediately get on a black and work up some body heat. And that's uh, honestly how we keep warm for the most part. Uh, tendency to, <laughs> when people come with us, they always have a tendency to get too hot. And so that's why we, we avoid that. Uh, on the bottoms, my legs rarely get cold, so basically I've just got a set of tights um, and a set of shell pants. And are your pants uh, insulated? Uh, these pants are not insulated. Uh, I think they've got like mild insulation, maybe. No, I don't think they're... Yeah, just a little bit. They're mildly insulated, so uh, I'll wear this. If it's spring skiing, I'll just wear these, but for the most part, I just wear like one set of these. Um, I think I used to have another set of fleece ones that I don't think I have them anymore. So at any rate, um, that's pretty much head, down, torso, legs, and then... Socks. Boots. You missed socks. Ah, socks. Okay, so socks. I will bring four pairs of socks for, we're going for like five days or whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter how long I'm skiing. Uh, I always bring the same amount because I'm kind of of the mindset that I can do, like... After I get done skiing for the day, I, I'll throw both of these in the sink with a little bit of Arm & Hammer uh, uh, soap, a little laundry soap, and wash them, hang them up to dry, and they'll be good to go for the day after, the, the, the second day after. Um, I do that just kind of cut down on stuff, and it doesn't take any more effort to do just a, a touch of laundry, you know, on, on your trip. So that's, that's why I do that. So anyway, these are smart wool socks. I've got some socks that are farm to feet socks that I'll also be bringing. Those are kind of new to me. I'll be testing those out. But wool socks are, are key. Uh, cotton is cotton is a bad deal in general whenever you're, you're, it's cold and you're sweating because it gets wet and it doesn't dry and that makes you colder. So that's super not good. Um, I always bring two pairs of ski socks. I keep one in my boot bag down there and wear one in. Because I usually change my socks at lunchtime because I sweat. So that's how we uh, keep our feet warm. I uh, got my ski boots in here. If you have ski boots, obviously bring your ski boots. If you don't and you rent them, then bring your ski boots. Uh, gloves, mittens. So I've got, I've got mittens and gloves. Um, it's kind of a toss up. Just, I just like pretty much just grab a pair and whichever one is the first one I grab. Unless it's cold. If it's really cold, I wear my mittens. And if it's really, really cold, then I'll wear my mittens with uh, with a liner gloves, kind of like what Stephanie was, kind of like how she had earlier. Um, so yeah, so that's the actual like ski gear for like, you know, going out on the town um, stuff. It's like, I just honestly just have uh, jeans and uh, I'll just wear one of my icebreaker shirts that's, uh, that's clean and then my fancy going out plaid shirt and uh, Pretty much call it good with that. Uh, she has her Sorel boots. Uh, I don't. I don't have any like really really warm boots. I usually just wear my hiking boots. Uh, they're they're waterproof. Uh, they're not insulated, but I don't really. Uh, I've never really needed them to be honestly. So I don't have a problem with my feet getting wet. 
Uh, on that note, kind of a kicker between the her boots and my boots. Mine are just you know kind of short top boots. Uh, I I like to wear uh, I like to wear gaiters. So these basically just sorry it's gonna be loud. Put on my house shoes. <laughs> that's pretty. That's fancy. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they just wrap around your legs like that. And then if you're walking around in deep snow, it keeps uh, keeps the snow from coming in the top of your boot. She doesn't need that with her boots since they're so tall, but I do. Uh, I wear these pretty often, honestly. Okay. Was that all of it? I think so. Swim hope shrimps. so. I'll bring a pair of swim, uh, swimsuit because there's a hot tub there. Uh, underwear. Underwear just... Uh, I know guys have a tendency to wear cotton boxers or anything like that. That's, I mean, you do you, but that's, that's, uh, something with like a polyester spandex, uh, Under Armour, Nike Pro, anything like that. It's going to be a better bet. Um, so on that note, like I said, I have, I have a significant amount of like polyester spandex blends between the, uh, between underwear and the tights, uh, that kind of stuff. Ultimately, wool is the way to go. Uh, the thing is, is wool is expensive. Uh, if I could have all icebreaker equipment, I would, but working towards it, because it's, it's, it's pricey. But if you don't spring for that, Under Armour is, is okay, but as you guys know, Under Armour isn't that much cheaper, so kind of a toss-up on which way you'd like to go on that. But if you want my recommendation, wool is the way to go. Icebreaker, Ibex, uh, who's another wool brand? Smart Wool. Smart Wool. Um, is another one. Um, True, True make wool. They make uh, they make quite a bit of wool stuff. They make some really really good equipment. Ex officio has some Ex as well. Ex officio pr primarily underwear. Farm to feed is a wool sock. Um, that pretty much it. That's all I can think of. Yeah. So we just listed a whole bunch of companies. So. Um, okay. Yeah. So I, I really think that's it as far as as far as that goes. So. We're uh, gonna wrap this up, and uh, yeah. So in the comments below, I guess let's uh, let's let's do a let's do a little have everybody tell us uh, something that you have a tendency to overpack. Let's learn from everybody else's experience, and in the comments below, let's find out what everybody has a tendency to overpack. So ready, set, go, and we'll see you tomorrow when we're on the road.